a lot of people actually don't know about illusions you know they don't know they've never heard of i mean we've all heard about an illusion like a magic trick is, is what comes to mind mm-hmm. um and that's technically i guess you could argue is true so like a, first off a hallucination is something that a person cannot necessarily control and they're seeing it like vividly and for a certain amount of time like once it's like past i mean i'm just kind of making this up like a get rough guess here like i would say if it's past like 10 seconds or like a minute then you're probably talking about a hallucination because and you're seeing it vividly and you're double looking and it's still there then that's probably a hallucination that your brain is creating you know and and the illusion is something that everyone experiences so hallucinations are are delegated to like people with like psychosis or other mental disorders that cause hallucinations or substances like lsd or acid and uh, all that stuff dnt whereas like illusions are something that everyone can experience and everyone has probably experienced at least several times in their life especially when you're younger so like for example hypnagogic hallucinations or hypnopompic hallucinations when you're going to sleep or waking up flash it like light things and people see dots i would see like dots in the early morning um and stuff like for example like i don't know if you've ever been in your bedroom when you're a kid and in the dark and you thought you saw something but it actually was something else like you yeah, thought you like saw a, a scarf or it was a yeah. hoodie so that's an illusion yeah that's all it is and so like that's why i say it could be magic tricks could technically be an illusion because basically an illusion is your mind seeing something visual that you think is real but then you do a double take and you realize it's not real so you it's not it doesn't last as long and you know it's not real maybe a hallucination is actually something that lasts a little bit longer and more of a chemical uh reaction in the brain that causes causes someone to see something that's technically not there as well it kind of reveals the limitations of our vision and of the way our brain perceives reality we've talked a lot in the past about like the five senses and consciousness and how complicated it all is the same thing with illusions like that's why they happen is because our vision is like not people not many people maybe realize like our vision is not actually complete you know, our brain fills in gaps. Like, you know, when you know about the blind spot? You know, in terms of uh, of our vision or blind spot in, in terms of, like, in general, like, we all have, like, a uh, blind spot in our... Yeah, perception. No, uh, yeah, I mean vision, yeah. Well, I've, I've I've heard of cases, and I know, like, personally, my, my mom, she says that sometimes there's, like, a part in in her vision that she just can't see. It's, like, like a dot or something like that because um our blind spot is it's basically like where the the optic nerve leaves our eye and goes to the brain and so there's like a tiny little hole there in the back of our eyes and that's why the blind spot exists and we can i think there's like ways you can kind of see it by doing the finger trick seeing the floating finger or like there's optical illusions online and on paper that you can try it out on that reveals the blind spot and so basically the blind spot like it, it, there's a gap in our vision, like a small spot in the center of our vision that's always there, but our brain fills in the gap. So like, think about that for a second, what that means. That means everything we're seeing right now, there's technically this little thing in the middle that's not actually real. It's our brain hallucinating, filling, like seeing an illusion, like filling in the gap. And it's like just a mental projection from our brain. It's not actually real, you know? Yeah pretty weird i wonder if that's what illusions are that's what i'm getting at you know yeah the brain yeah like you said filling in the gaps and i think it's also part of our survival mechanism right we're we're so uh i mean if if we have this ancient brain right that has evolved in, in different ways and it's also supposed to protect us from 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 harm right and so whenever it's night, you know, like you said, you see a scarf that looks like a monster, though the brain is filling in that gap. And so it's like, it's like, is it, or is it not? I, and it rather, it rather put you in a situation of fight or flight than to discount it as like, Oh, it's nothing. Right. And so it's, it's almost like protecting you and saying like, Hey, watch out for that. That, that could potentially be harmful. Right. And so, I think our, our, our brain is, is, is meant to keep us alive, right? It, it, it warns us of things that, that could potentially happen. And so that's why it's protecting our, ourselves by filling in the gaps, right? 
Yeah. And I think we do that in, in different senses, right? I, I think like even subconsciously with different things that essentially could, could create an illusion of something that's not really there. And, and I think maybe illusions could not only be physical, like things that we see, but we could be, uh, we, we could have an illusion of, of the personality of someone or an illusion of, of the reality um, of a situation, right? And so we could, be, we could be under an illusion, right? That the person that we're talking to is trustworthy, for example, or, um, or, is, or is harmful. Sometimes our, our, our mind fills in the gaps from situations of, of things that have happened in the past. And so if a person reacts and says a word that triggers something from the past, you automatically associate them with something that's negative. For example, they did this study and, and I recently heard about it. What was so interesting was that uh, the coffee that these people gave um, to, to hold for, this, for these people, half of them had ice cold coffee. The other half had warm coffee. When these people were reading the sentences, those people, the majority, like 80%, 75, 80% of the people who had cold coffee, right? They held cold coffee in their hand, said that the person, the character of the story that they were reading was a very cold, uh, distant, you know, person, right? Those people who had the, the hot coffee said the person was warm, caring, And so it just makes me think like, whoa, you know, this aspect of illusion can happen at a subconscious level that not only are we seeing an illusion physically, but we're seeing an illusion mentally, uh, almost to the point where one could say it's almost like a manipulation, right? But if we're going on a day-to-day basis, just living out our lives, you know, potentially, there could be more illusions than that we think we see. We don't realize, we don't right? realize we're just going through life. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's. Do you ever have those moments where, where like you become conscious, conscient of what's going on, and it almost feels so surreal that you have a person right in front of you, and you just yeah, and now hard. like you've over. been walking with them for the longest yeah. time, and you just realize that they're there. Like, yeah, you, you, you like see fully. Yeah, you kind of bring yourself, it's, it's almost like mindfulness, uh, making yourself aware of all your surroundings. And I used to do that quite a bit in college and just pay attention to everything going on in a busy room. Each little tiny detail that we just don't always focus on. And it becomes really surreal, and like like you said, and you start questioning it. And like it's, it becomes almost overwhelming because our perception is designed to be selective to not be overwhelming. But to go back to that example you gave earlier about the uh, scarf turning into a monster, that doesn't come from nothing, right? I mean, the, the idea that it's a monster doesn't just come out of thin air. You know, you're, you're exposed to monsters growing up in children's books and TV media. And so your brain takes that in and interprets that as a danger because monsters are usually depicted as dangerous in dangerous ways with the stereotypical fangs and the teeth and you know, I would even say, well, is that an archetype or a symbol of nature of that's been passed on from generation to generation for years? And so our brains just automatically associate sharp things like fangs, horns with danger, danger, like snakes, for example, snakes have fangs. That exposure to those monsters growing up and all those images, and that's where that comes from. You know, it comes from stimuli in the environment, internalized into memories, and then when you see a scarf or something in your room in the dark, well, that looks like one of these things that you're exposed to, you know, and so it forms that illusion.